uh, we'll be studying about DC motors and DC generators. Put together, you can say that DC machines. All right. So, module four. It is DC machines. Module four is further divided into two sections. The first section is DC generator, and the second section is DC motor. All right. First section is DC generator, and the second section is DC motor. Now, whether it is DC generator or a motor, the construction of DC machine. Okay, when you say machine, I mean to say either motor or generator. Okay, that is motor or generator is the same. So same construction for is good for a DC generator as well as a DC motor. All right. So the first part of module four is the construction. Construction of the generator as well as motor. Okay. So first let us take up the construction. So DC machine, just like your AC machine, it's a rotating machine. Is a rotating machine. It is majorly consisting of two parts. Stator, the stationary part. And the rotor, which is called as the rotating part. In DC machine, the stator is mounted with field system. Or in other words, you can say uh, the magnetic field system is mounted on the stator and the conductors are mounted on the rotor. Okay, so the setup is quite opposite uh, to that of AC generator, right? So this is for DC machine. You have seen in case of AC machine, for example, alternator. Uh, in case of alternator, uh, your stator has conductor system and the rotor was mounted with the field system. So the construction is exactly opposite uh, to that of AC generator. All right. So let us look at the detailed construction of uh, DC generator. So as I was mentioning, uh, it is consisting of two parts: stator part and the rotor part. All right. So first let us construct this data and followed by the rotor construction.
Okay. So this is how the stator of a DC machine looks like. This is how the stator of a DC machine look, looks like. So this is the outer part of the machine, which is called as stator. Okay, and the stator is fitted with the magnetic poles. You can see, right? North pole, south pole, and a north pole, and again, a south pole. So this is your field system. So in case of DC uh, machine, the field system is stationary. That's because the field system, let me flip the uh, stator, the field system is permanently bolted to the stator. So these are the bolt assembly, which is used to fix the field system onto the stator. All right. Followed by the rotor. So this is your rotor. So this particular rotor basically fits inside the machine. Okay. Yeah. This view is better, right? So this particular rotor fits inside the machine. So your field system is the stationary system and the rotating system is made up of the conductors. So this is your rotor. So as you can observe, can you see the windings? So these are the windings copper windings this is the shaft okay and this particular okay this is also the shaft and this is your rotor core rotor core laminated rotor core so inside the laminated rotor core you can find the winding so all these are winding the copper color uh, segments are nothing but the windings okay and there is also a device called commutator. Okay, this is the commutator, which is meant for converting uh, an alternate current into a direct current. Okay, I'll show this rotor once again uh, when I deal with the rotor construction. All right, fine. So, As I, as I was showing you that excuse me, this data is fitted with the magnetic poles. So let's draw the data. Okay. So this is your data. Data. And these are the magnetic poles. Okay, and this is your rotor. These are all imaginary lines meant for helping you in drawing the back. So this angle. Slightly lift it up. This is your free system, and this is your rotor system.
And this is your shell. The commutator. So now the field system, okay, let's say this is your north pole. Uh, and south pole, which is the north pole, and a south pole. So, field system is connected to the stata with the help of bolt assembly. Okay, so this is the field system which is connected to the stata with a bolt assembly. So, mechanical fasteners are used. To attach the field system okay. these are the bolts. So this particular field system is consisting of field wine. So let us place the field wine. So this is your field wine. Okay, because you know that in a high power DC machine, we cannot go for uh, natural magnets because the magnetic field produced by a natural magnet is feeble. So we need to have a very strong magnetic field. So to get a very strong magnetic field, we go for electromagnets. Okay. So let's say this is the positive terminal. Okay. And this is in turn connected to the other pole. And you will have the negative terminal here. So this is your field winding. The red ones are field winding. Okay. Now, okay, let us mark. So this is your field winding. Okay. And this is the mechanical bolt. Mechanical bolt assembly. Let us also sh show the crane hook meant for lifting purpose. This is called as lifting eye. Okay. And this is your DC supply for field winding because electromagnets require a source of electricity. So DC supply is given to the field winding. Okay. And the magnet, all right. So, this electromagnet is majorly consisting of two parts. So, the first part, which is a kind of squarish part, right, it follows a square shape, right. So, this part is called as pole core. So, this part is called, called as pole core, C O R E. And this whole core is fitted with a second part, which is taking the shape of a crescent moon, right? It is taking the shape of crescent moon. So the second part is called as pole shoe. Essentially, pole shoe. So together, that is, the pole core and pole shoe constitutes the field assembly of a DC generator. All right. Fine. So that's about the state R part. Coming to rota, coming to rota, in the rota, what you have is uh, on the, yeah, let me show you the rota. That's better, right? So, 
this is the rotor. All right. So this is the front view. This is what I'm trying to draw. Okay. So in the front view, you can see the shaft, right? So the inner part is the shaft followed by, you can see a circular part here, right? So this part I have shown right after the shaft. So this uh, partition based uh, structure is basically the second part, which is called as um, the commutator part. And the third part is nothing but the bigger uh, circle, the outer layer. So this outer layer is consisting of several conductors. You can see the copper wires coming out of it. So these are called as the conductor or uh, conductors of the DC generator. So on the outer part of the rota, we will find um, several, you know, slots openings. So these openings are meant for placing the rotor conductors or the armature conductors. In case of AC generator, you have seen that the armature conductors were kept on the stators. However, in case of DC generator, the armature conductors are kept in the rotating part. So these are conductors. Okay. So within these slots, you can find the conductors. Conductors. Okay. So let's mark. So the inner part is called as rotor core, and the openings found in the outer surface of the rotor core is called as rotor slots. And the conductors found within these slots are called as rotor winding. Rotor windings. And the center part is called as shaft. And the part which is next to the shaft is called as commutator. The commutator is used to convert a bidirectional current into a unidirectional current. That's your commutator. And pressing against the commutator segment, you have brushes. Brushes. Okay. So the two small square shaped boxes um, refers to the brushes. Okay. So let me use probably a different color. Okay, so these are brushes. Made up of carbon material. And finally, yes, you need to have a foundation for the DC machine. So this is your base stand. So this is the complete uh, uh, diagram of DC machine construction. DC machine construction, which is consisting of um, the stator part as well as rotor part. So in the exam, whenever you are being asked to draw the construction and details of, let's say, AC machine or DC machine, you are supposed to draw the machine using uh, compass, right? Because machine cannot be um, having irregular shape. It has to be circular, all right? Due to some limitation, you know, I could not show the perfect uh, circular machine, but you know, you have to draw uh, using a circular uh, diagram. If you are done with the construction, I can 
take up the explanation part. Okay. I can erase the figure, right? I'll take up the explanation part. Okay, so this construction normally asked for 8 to 10 marks. Okay. So when you say 8 to 10 marks, 60% of the marks are reserved for the sketch and 41% is reserved for the explanation. Okay. So first let me deal with the state of construction. Diagram is done now, just the explanation is pending. Okay, so Stata is consisting of um, the following three major parts. Um, Stata enclosure. Okay, next you have Stata code. And then you have the field system. The three major parts of stata are stata enclosure. So the stata enclosure is nothing but okay, let me write it as point A, point B, and point C. So let me talk a few things about point A, that is stata enclosure. So what what, what it is? So stata enclosure is nothing but the outer protective layer. So this outer protective layer protects the stata or the protects the internal parts of the machine against mechanical injury, you know, injury right? So basically it provides um, safety enclosure. Right? So it provides safety enclosure, enclosure so that the internal parts of the machine are not damaged. That's all. And this stata enclosure is made up of made up of cast iron or cast steel. Either cast iron or uh, cast steel is used for the construction of stata enclosure. So cast iron um, is less expensive. On the other hand, cast steel is expensive, more expensive. So the choice is made, made um, based on the cost. A cost effective DC machine will be having a cast iron enclosure. And a high efficient DC machine will have a cast steel enclosure. All right. And this enclosure is made up of laminations. Okay. You know why laminations? Because laminations are going to reduce the eddy current losses. And a good magnetic material such as cast iron or cast steel can bring down the hysteresis losses. So that's about the first part of this data. Next, you have Stata code. So, Stata code is nothing but the part of the Stata which is right next to the Stata enclosure. Okay, so this is your Stata code. This is your Stata code. Okay, so Stata core basically provides. Um, a kind of depth okay this is called as depth so that the field system can be mounted on to them right so state of core state of core provides a depth depth so that field system Can be mounted on them. Can be 
mounted on that. And the stator core, okay, is made up of silicon steel or CRG or steel, which is laminate. So, stator core is made up of a laminated silicon steel or CRGO steel. So, silicon steel or CRGO steel will have very high relative permeability so that the hysteresis loss can be minimized and the laminations will bring down the eddy current losses. The eddy current losses. So, put together, if you construct the uh, stator core using a silicon steel uh, having a laminated structure crack can bring down the iron losses, the I or the constant losses. All right, so that is about the state of core construction. Okay. The third part is the field system. So, field system, as I was explaining in the main diagram, that the field system um, is basically mounted onto the stator frame. Okay. So, this is your stator core on which the field system is mounted. So, this field system is consisting of two parts. The first part, okay, is called as pole core, pole core, on which the second part, which is called as pole shoe, is mounted. Okay, on which the second part, which is called as pole shoe, is mounted. So this is called as pole shoe. And the field system, uh, it carries basically the field winding, which is an electromagnet. Okay. So this is your winding. So this winding will have Two terminals, right? This is your first terminal. The second terminal is somewhere here. So you can say terminal one and terminal two. So this terminal gets connected to uh, the um, adjacent pole, so on and so forth. Okay. Now the whole assembly is supported using mechanical fasteners such as the bolt assembly okay. so this is your bolt assembly which provides uh, mechanical support right without the bolt assembly uh, the uh, pole assembly will follow so in order to securely fix the uh, pole core to the stator core you have to use uh, mechanical uh, joint assembly such as a uh, bolt assembly okay so that is your field system right now you may be wondering why this crescent moon shape right this is something like you know curvy structure is given. Now, if you give this curvy structure or crescent moon shaped structure, what happens is that um, the field system will be able to uh, throw flux light uniformly onto the rotor. Onto the rotor. Let me repeat. When this Crescent moon shape, the field system will be able to throw 
through the flux lines flux lines uh, more uniformly onto the rotor okay because it gives kind of arc shape so arc shape always gives a uh, better uh, uh, flux distribution okay because at you know this phase uh, you will have your uh, rotor coming into right so this is your rotor so rotor anyhow it is circular circular so if you can provide a kind of circular shape onto the field system you know you will be able to disperse uh, the flux lines uh, uniform okay so that's the reason this crescent moon shape is given you will not find any uh, square shaped uh, pole core or pole shoe all right it is always uh, a smooth uh, surface uh, pole shoes all right so that's about your the field system so once you are done with the construction of field system uh, you can go ahead with the rotor construction all right so rotor rotor i don't want to draw it again okay you can refer to the main drawing which i have drawn earlier so rotor is basically consisting of four major parts shaft and why shaft is used shaft is used to connect to external load right so when you use the dc machine as a dc motor you can connect the mechanical load onto the shaft on the other hand when you have to use a dc machine as a generator what you can do you can give mechanical energy you can give the mechanical energy so that you will be able to produce electricity all right so that is your uh, shaft functionality um, okay the second major part of rotor is the rotor winding which is also called as the armature winding okay armature winding or rotor winding so this armature winding okay it's nothing but a uh, group of conductors connected in a, a definite manner so the group of conductors can be uh, either connected in um, lap manner or lap wound manner or it can be connected in wave wound manner okay so what exactly uh, lap wound winding and wave wound winding uh, let me explain in the next class okay i'll give you a kind of detailed explanation so as of now you can say that um, see in case of three phase systems you have seen uh, the winding connections right the windings were connected either in star manner or delta manner on the other hand in dc system the windings can be connected in either lap wound or wave wound okay so this lap wound machine and wave wound machine uh, will have its own uh, you know features all right so that's about your armature winding next we have commutator so commutator is this you can see it's a circular object it is consisting of you know several copper conductors right several copper conductors and you can also find spacing between the copper conductors so your commutator segment if i were to show you the front wave okay what you have is several you know copper conductors and each copper segment is separated by a layer of insulation so this thick black layer uh, simply shows that it's a sheet of insulation so normally we go for mica as insulation insulation now the role of commutator is uh, uh, you know very very important in case of dc machine see it's a in case of dc machine uh, to be precise dc generator uh, it works on dynamically induced emf right uh, when there is a fixed magnetic field and when you have a rotating conductor uh, you will have an induced uh, uh, emf so whenever you have the induction of emf using uh, uh, 
uh, dynamic way, uh, the induced EMF will always be following the sine law that is E is equal to EM sine theta. Even in case of DC generator, the nature of induced EMF in the armature conductor is always sinusoidal. That's because it's a dynamically induced EMF. But what we want is the direct current uh, voltage, right? So to get direct current voltage, what we use is a commutator. So commutator is similar to that of a rectifier. So what it does is it takes the input as AC and it gives output as DC okay? uh, with a process called commutation. Okay, so this is your commutator. So there's a theory behind it. Okay. How can you convert an AC into DC using commutation? There is a theory called commutation process. Okay, that is not required at this uh, juncture. So what you can say that the alternating uh, EMF produced in the armature winding is converted into direct current electricity using commutator segments. Okay. So if someone asks you something like what is the nature of EMF in a DC generator uh, induced in the armature? It is sinusoidal. It is not direct current. After the commutator commutation process, whatever EMF you get, that is uh, direct current in nature. Okay, so that's your uh, rotor construction. So that completes the construction of DC. Okay. So I'll stop the class uh, at this point. Okay. So today what we have done is we have looked at the construction of DC machine as in the stator construction and the rotor construction. All right. So tomorrow let me uh, talk more about uh, the armature winding, okay, that uh, whatever I was referring to, lap warm and wave warm, and uh, followed by uh, you can uh, we can study about the EMF uh, equation for a DC generator. All right, thank you.